to make some super simple insert waggler floats. Um, the last two float making videos I've done sort of ended up rambling on and they went on for ages. So I want to try and make this a bit quicker. So I'm going to go straight into what you need. Um, something to make the floats with. These are Sarkanda reeds. I bought these online. Um, I would normally use Norfolk reed, but the stuff I harvested has uh, run out and where I get it from, it's still a bit green and fresh. So I wait until um, sort of winter before I harvest it. You'll need some kebab skewers. So these will form the actual inserts. These floats, these particular ones I'm going to make are um, just going to be um, inserts at the bottom, not the top, because the, these sarcander reeds don't really lend themselves to inserts that well. Something to whip the floats with to sort of do the detailing and also attach the eyes. Something to make the eyes out of. That is... Um, uh, brass safety pins that I've snipped the actual catch off of. You could use um, florist wire, which I've used before, stainless steel florist wire, and just bend it around a nail to make an eye, but effectively it's just a, two bits of wire tail with a loop that you can whip onto the float, but I'll show you that. Um, some super glue gel, really useful for gluing bits of float together. It's less runny than normal super glue, and... Um, it's yeah that's basically it really it sets just as hard as super glue uh, some paint that's just white gloss what needs a shake um something for the colors that's a bright orange um that's a model making paint it's quite dear actually but you can get uh, much better stuff or much cheaper stuff from hobbycraft 99p for a, like 250 milliliter tube of, of fluorescent paint in various colors so that's great um something to cut the materials with just got a standing knife I also use a small scalpel for um, trimming the um, cord when I do the whipping um, once you've put it all together you want something to varnish it with and I use this uh, the echo gloss acrylic varnish that's what I've used for all of my floats um, I know a few people use like an outdoor varnish, um, although to be honest, this gives almost like a honey coloured. So you you kind of, I've tried it and for me it didn't do too well in terms of the visuals. It just made them a little bit darker, but obviously personal preference. And if you're, you know, you're using a red rather than a bright orange or a bright pink or yellow, then actually it might not make a difference. And, and a lot of people like to use black tips as well. So I think you'd, you could definitely use something like this and it's, it's, this is going to be a bit more hard wearing than the model making varnish, but for me, the the um, this gloss acrylic has just been brilliant. Um, I water it down a bit. It's water based. The brushes are easy to wash. Um, if that's it, get it in focus. The brushes are easy to wash, um, and yeah, it's all all the floats that I've made have been have been varnished in this. Right, the way I like to get started um, when I'm making a batch of flowers, I'm going to try and make a batch of 20, um, but obviously I'm not going to go through me making 20 because it takes, it's going to take hours. But as I go through each stage, I'll do one of these as an example to show you on the film. So um, what what I do first is when I've got the, the reed in this length, because this is Sarkanda reed um, and most of the stuff you need to you need to do this, it has like a cellulose coating on it or like a, its own shiny waterproofing and it makes the varnish all bead up when you paint it. So... or varnish it on with a brush so what I do is that, even, is that in focus um what I do is just just give that a a sand and and with the Norfolk reeds I didn't need to sand it that much to be honest just rough it up a bit but with these um I found that you really do need to to sort of give them quite a good sanding so I've just got a scrap of scrap of relatively fine sandpaper you can see there it's already coming off and I'll just give it give it a rub down you don't want to scratch it too much you don't use too coarser paper because you'll end up with lines in it this is fine enough that it just roughs the surface up but microscopically so you can't actually you can't actually see it so uh, right that's the 10 all rubbed down um now the next job is to cut them to length because of these i want to um basically i'm not sort of these aren't going to be critical length so what i'm going to do is just half these and make these are about 310 mil and um, so when, when I've added the um, the bottom of them, the insert, they're probably going to end up being something around um, sort of 16, 17 centimetre long wagglers, which is exactly, you know, the sort of thing, probably weight of something like 2BB and the number one will, um, will, will get dotted down to the 
to the tip that I'm going to paint on. So uh, I'll cut these down and then show you the next step. Right, that's the 20 lengths there now. Um, what you want to do is now select the end that you want to be the tip and the end that you want to be the insert for these particular ones because the end of these is just going to be a painted end. Um, and then they just need to be sort of sanded down, sort of the ends need to be sanded and tidied up, and the end that are going to have the tip insert, it needs to be chamfered down, so it makes it easier to whip. But I'll show you a little tip that I've got if you've got um, sort of a thicker reed and a, sh and, a, and a thinner insert like the um, kebab skewer there. Um, then I'll just, when we get to that, I'll show you just a little tip um, to build that up to whip, make the whipping a little bit easier. Right, that's the lengths all cut, um, 20 or so lengths. Um, what you want to do now is select which end you want to be the tip and which end you want the end to have the eye on and then sand it accordingly and just sort of tidy it up. Um, so for this one here, I'm going to do this end as the tip. So I'm just going to give it a, just a bit of a sand really, just to tidy it up um, where, you've, where you've cut it. Um, and it's quite a sharp, if, when you're sand as well, if you do a circular movement, you can go back and forth, but you run the risk of, of splitting the reed, of sort of pinging the, um, the sort of, you can actually see a little tiny bit of it's just lifted there. And also, so what you want to do is just sort of, just give the, the this is the, this is going to be the painted end, so you don't want to chamfer it down too much, but just give it, just knock that sharp edge off, because when you paint and varnish it, if you've got a sharp sort of corner on that tip, um, it, it's a, a place where the paint and varnish can chip if you whack it or knock it or hit something when you cast or it, you know, pings on the rod or something like that. Then, um, yeah, so you just want to sort of soften that slightly, but not too much, because um, you want it to be a not, you know, you, uh, th these aren't going to be sort of tapered tips. They're just a nice sort of blunted end. And when you paint it, you will end up with a little slight dome building up there, especially if you hang it to varnish it. Um, and the other end where the insert's going to go what I should have actually said as well is um, because of this pithy sense it's not a Norfolk reed so normally I would say you could you just put your insert in but because um, it's got the pithy scent you need to take some of that out and so I just, just got a little drill bit here um, of this about two and a half mil probably something like that and just just by hand just very very gently with this you, you don't want to um, split the reed because if you, if you you couldn't actually see that could you let me do that again so just yeah just i'm just drilling that by hand um just it's so soft you know you could actually put it in a in a little drill driver um but just work it you only want to go in 10 or 15 mil and just just work that pith out um don't rush it because if you split this, then you've got to start again, and it's really annoying. And you, you, so you want to make the hole big enough for the insert to go in, but not so big that it's rattling around in there. Um, and so you'll practice with whatever inserts you're using. The kebab skewers come in different thicknesses. The ones I'm using are actually slightly thicker. They're a bit more expensive. I ended up getting them. They were really cheap on eBay with free delivery. I don't know how they how people can sell them for that. They're like a quid for something like two hundred or something with no delivery and they can you know it's like 70p in postage they came like a, a whatever a large letter is more than 70p now isn't it um yeah so but um that's what that's what you want to do and you, so don't so don't basically don't split it um and uh that that there will will give you the insert and then so once you've done that then you can sand it um so obviously you want to just give it a little bit of a tidy up but i'm this is very i'm not pushing hard very gentle and then because we're going to whip whip um the bottom of this whip where the eye goes in um i just want to put a little chamfer in it just so when you're whipping up the the kebab skewer um the the, the whipping cord goes on nice and neatly um because this is slightly thicker than the than the um kebab skewer i'm not putting a, another piece of reed as like an interim intermediate insert so you end up with steps it's just um straight into the reed i'm going to show you a little tip just using a bit of um epoxy putty to build up a bit of a shoulder and give you a nice slope to whip onto and it just you know it, it, a it helps waterproof the joint and b it just makes it look a lot neater and it makes it a lot easier when you're doing any whipping so i'm just going to chamfer this down 
you can see you can you can see that chamfer there and i'm going to do the same for all of the uh, all of the pieces of reed now drill them out uh tidy them up with the sandpaper and then chamfer them down and then that that's the reed bits done and then we'll get on to the what we're going to do with the kebab skewers right there you go guys the lengths are trimmed drilled and neatened up on the ends so I'll set them aside and make a start on the um, kebab skewer, the, the inserts that are going to hold the eye. Right, uh, just to cut the skewer now, um, you know, this is this is just super simple. Um, it's nice that this board's got one centimetre square, so I'm going to make um, make the insert 50 mil long or five centimetres. Um, that... Um, will just give me the length that I need and, and I'm just using a sharp Stanley knife to cut it. And there you go. Just to say as well, guys, I will finish these. I'm going to make the 20 now. Um, and they I, all, all I do is just give them a bit of a sand. Again, just knock the very sharpish edge, edges off. Right, guys, there's all the skewers i've just stuck them in here this is a just a little holder i've made for drying and painting and stuff it's just a piece of wood with 20 holes drilled in it so um yeah they're just in there i've put them all that way because i have got a preferred end for um which end goes in and which it stays out they're just you know as you've cut them and whatnot and the grain of the skewer it does actually have a slightly more presentable look to some ends of it but it doesn't really matter. Um, so now what I'm going to do is glue them into the reed. Uh, um, and so what I do is I just try and put three little dobbles, tiny. That's really just one massive one now. That's a... That was supposed to be three, but there's a bit much come out there. But I'm holding this a bit further away than I would normally be. Um, Obviously, be careful with super glue. It's nasty stuff if you get it on you. Um, it's cyanide based or cyanide or whatever it's called. So it's fairly poisonous. Um, and it sets when the oxygen gets taken away from it. So once you push this in nice and tight, then um, that's it. It's in and you're not going to get it out. So make sure you're happy before you do it. And I'm going to do it now. Uh, there you go. That's in. It does dry fairly instantly, um, and if you sort of double it on properly, you end up you don't get any squeezed out around the sides or anything like that. That's nice and instant. Um, and what I'll do is I'll go through now, do the twenty, and then come back to you in a second with how I'm going to make like a little collar on on just the joint there. And to especially this one, you can see um, it's a little bit thicker than than the skewer. So if you're whipping onto that, it'd be a little bit challenging so i'll show you using a bit of uh epoxy putty two pie epoxy putty making a collar there but i'll uh, show you that in a second right guys so this is the um the little tip for building up the collar around the bottom of the reed insert this is mini put um i was put on this by um phil from lads week so shout out to you phil um i've never come across this before but i'm not much of a diyer um it's a two part two part epoxy resin putty and you mix these two together in equal quantities they come in like two sort of sausage shapes in the box i've used quite a lot of it now mix them in two equal quantities and you end up with like a plasticine consistency and then i just use my thumb and forefinger to um, build it up along the along the sort of insert there um, and then you can just whip up there and it just gives you a much neater finish, um, as as you'll see. Uh, this, and just to caveat this as well, or a bit of a health warning, um, <laughs> get the right way up. It's, um, it says it may cause an allergic skin reaction here. I've never had any problems with it, um, but I don't use loads of it, and I don't use it frequently. So first time you use it, I'd definitely um, wear a glove if you can and um the same for all the other glue the knives just be careful be sensible um you know if you you know if you're a child watching this and you're thinking about doing this do get some help from a supervising adult right time to start the painting now guys um so first things the first you want to put a white primer coat on um because if you're going to paint it with any fluorescent paints you need to have a white undercoat for it to really fluoresce properly and really kind of you know the color to pop out 
Um, what I normally like to do is start, um, is just put up, put on something on the telly or the radio or something so I can sit and just sort of do it because um, it's going to need about five coats. So this, this is, this is just white glossy, uh, white matte emulsion, water based. And um, I've already, I've already sanded this down. And normally I'd actually go the other way. I know. I'm, this isn't naturally how I'd hold it. I'm doing this for the purposes of the video. That's a bit weird. Um, I'm not really measuring it. I'm just going to do one or two sort of till I get a feel for how. Because what I want to do is leave a little bit. I want a fair sort of sized tip on it to give, you know, if you want to fish it a little bit further out or whatever, um, you know, you can have a good visible tip. But also I'm leaving, I want to leave enough white. So I want to put a white band between two black whipping lines um well, i've got one handy uh yeah give you an idea that's that's the kind of thing i'm going for and um, that's obviously an insert there it hasn't been varnished yet um so yeah that's it really so i'm gonna do all 20 and but if i do it nice and slow and just take your time nice even brush strokes try not to get too many lines this is a bit of a naff brush actually the, like cheapy ones i've got um Square end brush, so you get a nice. I'll neaten that up in a minute properly, and then because so, you can hide any jagged lines with a whip in anyway. But obviously, the neater you do it, the 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 thinner you can have your whipped line, which does look nice and does make the float look really smart. So I'm going to do them all about that length of white, um, all twenty. And as I when I get to the end, if I take my time, this should be just dry enough to start another coat. So I can normally sort of do one sitting. Of, of paint coats um, in about probably about I don't know 40 minutes to an hour so I put something on the telly or the radio and um, just just work my way through right there you go that's um, uh, the 20 with the first coat of paint and I just wanted to just show you this weird angle here just you can see the pithy end it's really soaked up the paint so what I'm gonna do is uh, if you see that one there I've actually dipped the end there, and what I'm going to do is is just dip, um, dip them all basically. So you end up with like a little round sort of bubble of paint. It doesn't stay like that. It actually does sink in, and um, but a it gives them a uniform top, so they look neater when you finish them, and uh, b um, it does just stop any extra you know any moisture or anything. Because on a Norfolk reader, they're totally hollow, and I would have capped the end off with a bit of milliput, but. In this case, because they've got the pithy centre, I'm going to use the um, the paint, and it's a waterproof um, emulsion paint, basically. Well, guys, there you go. Next day, um, they've had five coats of white emulsion, and I've sort of been and I, as I did every couple of coats, I dipped the end, and um, then what I did before the last two coats, I let them completely dry, and then just gave them a very sort of light sanding with. Um, a very fine sandpaper just to kind of smooth the um smooth the, the tops of them and um yeah they've they've come out really nice so um it is now time for one of the more fun parts we're going to add the color these are the colors i'm going to use i've had these for ages since i started making floats i've made hundreds of floats and i still haven't used all the paint that's the, the most frequently used color which is the bright orange you can definitely get it a lot cheaper though if you just want a bright orange yellow green something like that um even like they do like a fluorescent red right i'm going to start with the orange and i actually i apply the paint to the brush and i don't know if this is bad form or or whatever this is a brand new brush as well um he says this is one there you go that's probably too much but you're up to so i apply it to the brush just as it cuts out wastage if you put it onto a palette or something or a piece of paper then um you end up um putting some of the paint on the paper so I'll just give this a paint now. All that stuff in the background's mucking around with the focus. I think that's in focus. And yeah. I'm trying to do this on camera and looking over the top of it. I'd normally use a bit of a tighter bristle brush than this, but we'll we'll persevere and see how we get on. It's supposed to be a square end, so you get a relatively straight line. Sorry, I think I drifted, I think I drifted out of view there. I'm going to try and persevere. Um, so that's the...
that's the one coat of orange. Um, it don't actually come out that fluorescent. I think it might be the light. There's like warm glow LEDs in here. Um, so that's the kind of the length of the tip and the white. And then so I'll put a black band there, black band there, and that neatens it up, and you end up with a nice neat white sort of sight tip there um, for you know if you get a lift by indication or whatever. So I'll um, I'll crack on with those now. Well, guys, that's the colours painted. <clears throat> Finished it last night. Um, it's now the next evening, so you're sort of giving you an idea. This is a few days' job if you're doing a batch of floats. Um, I probably could have waited around and whipped them last night. Depends how much time you've got, but didn't fancy it. So now it's on to the fiddly part, which is whipping the black bandings and eyes on. Um, and then all I'll have to do is show you adding the logo and varnish them, varnishing them, and um, they should be done. So I'll show you that now. Right, let's talk you through the whipping. Um, this is the thread I'm using. It's like a non-fluffy, man-made thread. If you want to do fine detailing work or colours or whatever, um, you can use <coughs> silk. This is from Piper's Silk, just a black and orange. They're different, whatever colours you want. Really, they do low. I mean, they, you know, it's like embroidery silk and stuff like that. But they do. Um, uh, well, they sell to float makers basically. Um, I'll put a link to their website. Um, they they're a small family run business in suffolk or norfolk i think um so you don't get sort of like next day turnarounds on delivery because they wind all the silks on um as you need them um rather than just having them sat there in stock i guess so um but yeah piper silks they're called and they're brilliant so i'll put a link to that and i've got loads of different colors but for the purposes of these floats these are not works of art these are just going to be functional floats um that i that are intended to be used um and lost probably you know I'm, you know because people are going to cast them into trees and all the rest of it so yeah that's the idea behind just using the um this cheap stuff here which was i think three quid for 1.5 kilometers <laughs> so you get plenty of it right so before you start you you want a little piece there which is going to be your draw string to draw the draw itself back through um to tie the knot off but i'll show you that or to tie it off i'll show you that as i go um and also you want a sharp knife for trimming um i would normally use a little tiny craft scalpel but i don't know where i've put it um right so basically take a line where you want the black band to start which is going to be about there which just cuts off any brush strokes take a turn and then go round itself if you know what i mean so pinch itself and i hope this is neat i'd normally have this a lot closer to my face but i'm Doing it for the camera and it's not focusing as better. Right, once you've pinched yourself and taken a few turns, you want to cut off this tag end either with a sharp pair of scissors or the craft line. I'm going to go try the scissors. They're nice and sharp. So a few turns to get your desired width. Um, do one more. I want this to be fairly, fairly wide band. Um, so obviously make sure that you're butting it up against the last piece that went round. No gaps, nice and flat, so you're not overlapping each other. Because one, if it's not flat, once you varnish it, it does really show up and looks horrible. So um, even for sort of just basic floats, you're going to use yourself. Take a bit of care on it because you know even these are not sort of like fancy artistic ones. You still want them to look smart and nice. Um, so, then what you do is, he says, you know, you've got to try and be a bit dexterous with this. So, sort of, you know, try and do it right. So, I'm whacking into a tripod if you see a camera shaking. Lay your drawstring across, making like a loop. So, you've got two tag ends sticking out. What you want to do is whip a few turns round the loop so you, i've done it i couldn't do it on camera because it, it kept knackering and just kept falling out i needed to sort of have a bit more control of it and i couldn't do it in front of the camera so i've got three turns there over the top of this loop so you've got two tag ends sticking out i'm going to do one more as i go round. bring it underneath snip off the tag end of the main bit you're whipping with and then you put it through that loop and just pull it as you go 
and then you're going to pull it back through its pack through the whipping the tag he says try I'm getting purchase on this string that's it and so that's through and see that then what you want to do is cut that tag in it's so sticking up through the whipping And cut that off, and that's where a knife's better than stringing this. He says, Let's try and do it. Oh, damn, just about. And I'll just use my thumb now to kind of butt it all together. Um, and I put obviously pull that tight, and there you go. That's your I'll try and show you that. That's your black band. Um, what I'm going to do is now do one here and then I'm going to do exactly the same but whipping the eye on and I think um, if you want to see me whipping the eye look at um, as you can see I've added the other black band there I've also whipped the eye on and just done a bit of a decorative spiral well relatively decorative I don't know how decorative a spiral bit of string is um, I've used a brass safety pin snipped off for the eye is that focus on? Well, there you go, guys. All whipped and banded. Absolutely. They, I mean, it's just such a nice sight, isn't it? Um, especially something you made yourself. I really, you know, hopefully this video has inspired you to give it a go. Um, it's, they're not quite finished yet. Obviously, they need varnishing, and I'm going to put my own logo decals on, which I'll show you just for the sake of completeness of the video and show you the varnishing. And then hopefully, um, once that's all done, I'll show you a picture of them all complete and ready to go. But yeah, they've they're, they're, they're turned out great and they just look really, really neat. Right, these are the water slide decals that I use. They're, they're basically, they're the little, um, like the kids' fake tattoos you get. You soak them in water and then and they peel off the paper on the back and then you apply them. Um, I'm going to attempt to show you the application of one now. Right, so I'm going to apply one to the little pot of water I've got. Um, there are some videos on YouTube how to apply these, but um, so this isn't sort of a definitive guide, and it doesn't take long. It takes a you know a few seconds for that to get it slapped on and stuck on, um, and you can sort of manipulate them. Right, so let's take the backing off. Discard that. Get a float. Obviously, make sure it's the right way up. And you can just, while it's wet, you can just get it level. And there you go. Logo applied. That will dry nice and flat. And then you varnish over it and you see it totally, the, the lines and seams on it are totally invisible. Um, it looks really, really nice when it's done. I'll just show you one detail and one that I've done earlier that's been varnished. You can see there's no eye on this float. It was a bit of a um, an experiment that didn't work, but you can see the uh, the logo there under the under the varnish, and you can't see the edges or anything really. Um, yeah, so it's really, really nice. Right, so this is my. Um, it's made from arms, old retail arms from a shop that I got off um, John Williams, who, if you've watched some of my videos before, you would have seen that... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, you would have seen that um, he he made some floats for me, and really he's a, they got me into float making, to be honest, at the start of lockdown. So um, shout out to you, John. And he gave me these, these old arms from... They're like old retail arms, and I just strung a bit of fishing line across them and some little wire hooks, and it just makes a really convenient varnishing and, and drying rack so um i'm not going to show you the varnishing to be honest because i'm just i just paint it with a a small paintbrush um so yeah that's 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 it really um that's the, pretty much the floats done so i'll put up a picture now of the finished article and hopefully that's been informative and useful for you and inspired you to have a go at making floats because it's great fun especially during this time of 
lockdown two, uh, it gives you something to do. So yeah, cheers guys, fish on. Thank <music> you.